You're watching ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. A gorgeous day for football in the Tar Heel State today. And two young programs collide here in Chapel Hill. The four and two South Florida Bulls and the North Carolina Tar Heels hoping to avoid a three game losing streak. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Keenan Stadium alongside my partner, Brian Kinchin. I'm Clay Matvick. Both teams we're going to see here today have freshman quarterbacks. The South Florida experiment has worked a little bit better, but North Carolina likes Cam Sexton. Sexton's young and his inexperience sometimes gets him in trouble. Head coach John Bunting feels quarterback is all about decisions. His decisions have to get better and more consistent. The running game needs to establish itself so it'll take pressure off of him. His counterpart today is a good one, also a redshirt freshman, Matt Grothy, and he has proven dangerous with his feet as well as his arm. Well, they expected a lot out of him out of high school. They did not know he could run the ball so well, and he has added another dimension to this offense. A second running back, but he also can throw the ball really well and really accurate. He is going to be the difference maker for this South Florida offense. Beautiful day for football here in Chapel Hill. 58 degrees, crisp, cool, light winds, and a powder blue sky. South Florida stopped a two-game losing streak last week with a win over UConn. Meanwhile, the Tar Heels lost their second straight last Saturday to Miami in the Orange Bowl. They're going to try and stop that here today in front of their home crowd. These teams have never met before. North Carolina is going to have the football to start here today. Kicking off for South Florida, Mike Benzer. And Kendrick Williams is back deep for North Carolina. And we are underway, and it's going to be a touchback here to start. First and 10 from the 20 for North Carolina. And Cam Sexton, a redshirt freshman, still looking for his first Division I victory as his starting quarterback. Put up some... Nice numbers against Furman last month, but he and the Tar Heels often struggled the last couple of games at Clemson and Miami. You see his completion percentage under 43%. That's something they'd like to see start improving. Well, I think that is going to improve if the running game can get going early. Ronnie McGill is the running back. We're going to be talking a lot about him here today. They'd like to get him a bunch of carries. Sexton is under center. And the first play from scrimmage for the heels. And it is Ronnie McGill and a good pickup on first down. Offensive coordinator Frank Signetti would like to get McGill about 20, 25 carries today. Foster and Hawley are the talented wideouts. On the offensive line, Lemming, Darity, Lenahan, and Gray. And Brian Chakos at left tackle. He's in his sixth year in this program. Second down and three after a pickup of seven for McGill on first down. Send a man in motion. Sexton under center, turns around, another handoff. This time, nowhere to go for Ronnie McGill. Stephen Nicholas, the strong side linebacker, getting in there to make the stop. The Bulls aren't big up front defensively, but they held UConn to 60 yards on the ground last week. Alan Cray, number 94, leads the team in sacks. We're probably going to be talking about weak side linebacker Pat St. Louis a lot today. He seems to always be around the ball. And in the secondary, Trey Williams at left corner is tied for third in the nation with five picks. Mike Jenkins also very good on the right side. Cam Sexton out of the shotgun. Throws it over the middle, has a receiver, it is caught. Brooks Foster, a big play guy, makes a nice catch there, and North Carolina will move the chains. Well, we're seeing an early commitment to the run by Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator. He knows is that's what will win this ball game for them. And Wally Burnham on the other side, the defensive coordinator knows that as well. We see Cam throw the ball here. He has a great looking ball. That was a pickup of 18. First down and 10 at the 42. They go back to McGill, and again, that is snuffed out quickly. Perhaps a gain of one yard. No, no gain on the play. Woody George, the defensive tackle, made the initial stop. As you look at North Carolina head coach John Bunting in his sixth season here in Chapel Hill, this is the only college job that he would take. He said if he got offered this job, this is the one he wanted and would take, and he's happy to be here now in his sixth season. Well, this is his 
College, the place where he played his own college football. He loves this institution. Again from the 42, Sexton looking to his right. Pressured out of the pocket. Chased, and now he's going to throw it smartly out of play. Jared Bowie, the junior out of Tampa, Florida, in the pursuit there. And Sexton got rid of it. Third down and 10. The North Carolina defense up front. Highly Taylor, a strong pass rusher with Bynum, Guy, and Rackley. Take a look at the linebackers. And they're being asked to be more physical this week. Larry Edwards is the leading tackler in that group. Injuries have affected the secondary. Kareem Taylor is a three-year starter, but it's strong safety for the first time this year. Third down and four. South Florida's first possession batted at the line and knocked down. Getting a paw on it, Kent Juan Bulmer, the junior defensive tackle. And just like that, South Florida, three and out. Well, those are the plays that North Carolina is going to have to make defensively, every which way that they can stop that ball moving throughout the air because they do such a very good job throwing that football with Matt Grothy behind center. So Justin Tichy back inside his own 10 yard line to punt this one away. Good snap. A little bit of a rugby style kick here. It bounces at the 47 and takes a nice South Florida roll to the 30 yard line. And North Carolina will come back out on offense. No score just underway here in Chapel Hill. Carolina at South Florida. South Florida and North Carolina scoreless here 10 38 to go first quarter we apologize we understand some of you are experiencing technical difficulties with our game we're going to get those straightened out for you as you look at Jim Levin South Florida head coach a Tampa area native who in 10 years has built a program literally from scratch and got the program accepted by the Big East here a couple of years ago and last year took the team to its first bowl game he's done quite a bit in very little time. First down and 10 for Carolina at the 30. Sexton steps back. He's going to throw off his back foot. Got it to a receiver. And Jesse Hawley brings it in. A good pickup on first down before Carlton Williams wraps him up. It's going to bring up second down and three. It is the 10th season now for the Bulls. Meanwhile, their counterpart today in season 116, quite a contrast. Quite a bit. The program there, they didn't even have offices when they first showed up. They were in trailers, didn't have anything. Yeah. Started from scratch. Ronnie McGill changes direction, runs out of options, and down he goes. I think they call that a pileup. What do you think, Clay? Yeah, Pat St. Louis, the first one there, and we warned you about him. He's uh, got a nose for the football, a senior on this very young team for South Florida, maybe the youngest they've had here. Well, and I think that's a good thing because they are a very good football team on both sides of the football. They've got some great linebackers on defense who are just exceptional. You're looking at St. Louis right there. There's a kid I liked watching last night on tape talking to Jim Levitt down on the field. He likes this kid as well, makes plays. After a loss of two, third down and five. Forced out. Sexton coming to the near sideline is going to walk out of bounds after a pickup of a first down. Trey Williams was in pursuit, but Sexton, he's got some uh, decent legs, too. We talk about Matt Grothy, the USF quarterback, being able to run, but Sexton does a nice job here after the pocket collapses. Well, this North Carolina offense is different than the other side of the football. It's more of a run-oriented offense, and Sexton's not asked to use his feet a lot. He's asked to hand the ball off, make the throws when he needs to, and make good decisions. A gain of eight for Sexton. His dad was a defensive back for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the mid-70s, so he's a good athlete. Reverse here for Carolina. Brooks Foster. Room to run along the near sideline. It's going to be another first down. Carlton Williams herded him out of bounds. And the Tar Heels moving the chains here. Well, watching South Florida yesterday, they have difficulty with misdirection, especially when you look at reverses. 
because there is someone responsible for staying at home, usually the backside corner, the backside defensive end. They need to be disciplined because plays like that didn't hurt them that badly, but those can result in big, big plays if they don't watch it. A gain of 11 for Foster. Sexton to throw here on first down. Got it to Bobby Rome, the fullback, a big gain and then some. Oh my. Mike Jenkins made the tackle in the secondary, but Bobby Rome had four catches for 32 yards coming into play today, gets 28 on that catch. Well, th this is very similar to what I just got through talking about. Backside linebacker Steven Nicholas, number 51, gets lost, loses containment. And a boot play is the exact same as a reverse. The quarterback simply reverses back out on a boot and makes the throw. Well-designed play. Redshirt freshman to redshirt freshman. Sexton to Rome. Now they go back to McGill. Their feature back. He scampers in. Touchdown, Carolina. 15-yard touchdown run. Ronnie McGill. McGill playing healthy after an injury-riddled season last year and the year before. Healthy and happy after this touchdown run. Well, this is what Wally Burnham, the defensive coordinator for USF, was concerned about. He knew if they got the running game working and got their wheels turning, they'd be very difficult to beat. They're going to have to come up with a solution to stop that. Connor Barth, 10 for 10 on PATs this season, make it 11 for 11. And Carolina has a first quarter lead with 8.32 to go. 7-0 Carolina, Ronnie McGill from 15 yards out. And the heels are on top. Tar Heel blue skies here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And the Tar Heels have a 7-0 lead at the 8.32 mark of the first quarter. A six-play, 70-yard drive capped by a McGill touchdown run of 15 yards. Sexton on that drive, two for two, 35 yards through the air, and also at a run of eight yards. So, as advertised, they're going to try and get some things done on the ground, and they did on that last drive. Dropped inside the 10. Good coverage down there by the kick team for North Carolina. Quinton Person on the tackle. Torres Johnson, after that muff kick, was able to recover, and South Florida has it first down and 10 at the 10. Matt Grothy from the shotgun fires it up. Left side has a receiver, and it's going to be enough for a first down. Ian Randolph with the catch as you take a look at the Big East standings. And West Virginia, if they were to get knocked off today, that would... Uh, give them their first loss as you can see 5 and 0 oh, and the Big East has three teams undefeated. Well, I would agree that's impressive. That's a lot of teams, a lot of good quality football there. Hand off to Benjamin Williams stays on his feet. And the fi pile finally pushes him down. Kareen Taylor, the strong safety, stepping up, third-year starter. Making the stop on Williams. He walked on at South Florida and did not have a carry before this season, and he scored his first career rushing touchdown last week against UConn. They're hoping for a big day from him again here today. Well, noticing what he likes to do. He likes contact. He's an inside runner. He's not as effective on the perimeter. Send Devin Gordon in motion. Play action. Brophy looking down the middle of the field. Has a receiver wide open. S.J. Green, the senior member of this South Florida receiving core. Kareen Taylor was able to push him out of bounds. But S.J. Green, well, we're seeing, big pickup. we're seeing the results. North Carolina's defense has not played well this year. They have been inconsistent all year long. They are ranked near the bottom in almost every category in the NCAA, and this is what they're going to have to prevent. South Florida, Matt Grothy is so effective throwing the football, and it doesn't matter where on the field he puts it. A gain of 34. First and 10 now at the 37. It's dropped. 
Amari Jackson able to regain possession and trudge ahead to the 32-yard line. Shelton Bynum making the tackle. Well, Amari Jackson is a guy that we need to watch out for. He is a guy who is a big play type guy. He's six. Five, 195 pounds. They're going to find ways today to get him the football because he has a chance to be a real impact player who hasn't had a chance earlier in the year but could today. Second down at five, three receivers sent here for the Bulls. Brophy changing the play. Now runs down the line looking maybe for the pitch. No decides to keep it himself and dives inside the 30 yard line. It's kind of an interesting play there. Well, we're seeing the uniqueness of the South Florida offense. It's a spread offense. Matt Grothy, because he runs the ball so well, he's not an, an unbelievably dynamic runner, but he's just very, very smart running the football. And with this offense, there's so many little different nuances to it. And there we just saw one, which is the straight option. Third down and two. Brophy directing traffic, throws it toward the corner, and it's almost picked off. The intended receiver, Ian Randolph, but Jacoby Watkins almost picked that one off. Well, that's obviously an ill-advised throw. It, it's not a bad decision, but if you watch Grothy when he throws it, he's on his back leg here, and you just do not put the ball up in the air off of your back leg. It's a high-risk throw. He doesn't do that. Very surprising to see him make a decision like that. So Mike Benzer is on to attempt a 47-yard field goal. He is just one for four on attempts over 30 this year. And this one is going to be pushed to the right. So South Florida comes up empty on that drive, and North Carolina continues to have the lead here. 5.31 to go, first quarter. Carolina 7, South Florida nothing. North Carolina ready to start its third drive. They lead 7-0. That last drive, pretty impressive, Brian. It was a six-play, 70-yard drive. Well, they did a lot of fun stuff, getting the ball into the hands of their playmakers and letting Sexton do some different stuff on the move, conservative throwing of the football. Ronnie McGill, the tailback. Play action, Cam Sexton again down the middle, has a receiver. It is caught across midfield and to the 44-yard line, senior Jesse Hawley. As we take a look at that last drive. Well, we watched the reverse early. Brooks Foster, who is one of their playmakers, they're going to find him a way to get the football. And the naked boot right here to Bobby Rowe, their receiving fullback, a great play. I love the boot. And then to, to finish it all off, Ronnie McGill right up the middle where he is most effective for the touchdown. At the 44 after the gain of 26 for Holly, they go back to McGill, comes over left tackle, bangs his way inside the 40-yard line, but we've got our first penalty flag of the football game. Ben Moffat made the stop for South Florida, and this is going to go against Carolina. McGill played in only seven games last year because he tore his pectoral muscle lifting weights. Dennis Hennigan is our referee today. This is a big East officiating career. Well, I think we're seeing what Wally Burnham, the defensive coordinator for South Florida, was afraid of. Those big guys up front for North Carolina will cover up his guys, his front four, who aren't the biggest in the world, and he does not keep them off of his linebackers. His After linebackers, his defense, the are their line. strength, and he needs to keep those big linemen off his linebackers so they can move and make plays and shut down that Carolina running game. So a first down and long. Sexton, five-step drop, looks to his right, throws it out there, and it is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, John Hamlet, the tight end. We're at Chapel Hill, North Carolina today. ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. Alongside Brian Kinchin, former LSU tight end. I'm Clay Matvick. South Florida is in white. 
North Carolina in powder blue. And the Tar Heels looking to avoid their first three-game losing streak since 2003. John Bunning, the head coach. Looking to see his team uh, take a stride in the right direction here today against this non-conference opponent. Lands incomplete. Intended receiver Brooks Foster. Third down and very long here for North Carolina. Third and 24 coming into the game. The Tar Heels 37% on third down conversions. They drop it short to McGill. And he is snuffed out. It's going to be a loss on the play. Josh Julmis, a, a difference maker on this South Florida defense, who's a little bit rusty. This is his first game of the year after being suspended for the first six games. Makes a big play there. So North Carolina will have to punt. Amari Jackson back to return this punt. And he's going to take it at the 26. Out over the 30 and close to the 35 yard line before he's corralled. South Florida has it first down at 10 at the 34 yard line. 7-0 North Carolina on top. 3.23 to go here in the first quarter. So first meeting of these two schools. South Florida trying to go to 5-2, which would match their best start in team history through seven games. We told you, Grothy can run as well, and a good pickup there on first down before the free safety D.J. Walker steps up. It's a pickup of seven yards. Well, like I said, he's not real nimble of foot. He doesn't do anything spectacular. He just finds his way, picks his way, and does a good job with that read option of either keeping it or pitching it or either handing it off or going around the end. Just very smart with the football. Surprising for such a young kid. Again out of the shotgun. Inside handoff. Goes to Ricky Punton. That's going to be enough for a first down. Potton, this is his first game of the season as well. He also was suspended for six games. And love and discipline is the motto of this team, according to head coach Jim Levitt. If you knew what I suspended these players for, you'd think six games was too harsh. But he says, that's our policy. The players know it, and they had to serve this time. First down and 10. Fakes the handoff, kicks it to the outside. Grothy with another good pickup on first down, this time eight yards. D.J. Walker knocks him out of bounds. But Grothy, as you can see, very good on his feet. Well, what's amazing is big Mark Dial, number 78, 310-pound right tackle, was leading him around the left side. It's a long way to go for a big guy. Grothy is going to send two receivers to the right. Now changing the play at the line. Turns and gives it back to Punt. Looks like he, he may have enough for a first down. Again, Walker in on the tackle. Four receivers. Again, Grothy out of the shotgun. Quick throw to the right. Jackie Chambers has it. Dances along the near sideline, driven out of bounds. Darrell Mapp on the stop. Take a look at the Big Ten and how that stacks up right now. Ohio State, the number one team in the country. We're seeing them next week. Michigan, also undefeated. And it's a very stout Big Ten when you got Iowa and Wisconsin also in the top 25. Well, Iowa always seems to be there. Kirk Maris and those guys do a great job, no matter what kind of talent they have, of ki keeping those kids coached up, responsible, playing consistent football every year. And we'll see that Buckeyes team next week. We're in Columbus, Ohio State, and Indiana on ESPNU. 
On the ground, Ricky Ponton inside the 20 yard line. Big first down there for South Florida. Kareem Taylor able to make the stop to strong safety, but it's a big gain there for Ponton. Well, we see Ponton being very effective, but we have to remember this is his first ball game. He, along with Julmas and Chambers, number two, their wide receiver. This is their first time on the football field, so we saw Ricky make a good run, and where does he head? Straight to the bench to get some oxygen. 15-yard pickup for Ponton, who was the primary backup to Andre Hall, the Bulls' all-time leading rusher, who had well over 1,300 yards in both his junior and senior seasons. A little trickery here on the reverse. Coming up the near sideline for the end zone, Torres Johnson, touchdown South Florida. They have got all kinds of looks in this offense. There is a misdirection play on the reverse. Torres Johnson takes it in. Well, they give it to him, Murray Jackson, their playmaker. But guess what? He gives it to Torres Johnson, who sees nothing but daylight. What a well-designed play run at the right time of the ball game. Coming on for the extra point is Mike Benzer. Jumping good, and we've got a tie football game. Johnson got playing time last year as a true freshman, Brian, and showed enough ability that he has become a starter this year. And you can see he's not only a good receiver, but he runs very well. Well, he has to be a good receiver on this play. What a fantastic toss by Jackson. Like it was nothing, nothing but daylight. Even see Grothy out there showing his skills as a blocker, as far as quarterbacks go as blockers to get him into the end zone. A 19-yard touchdown run for Johnson, the sophomore out of Cape Coral, Florida. And just like that, we've got a tie football game with a minute and 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. Seven plays, 66 yards, a little over two minutes. South Florida got its first Big East win last week, 38-16 over UConn. The big thing in that game, Brian, was that they didn't turn the football over. South Florida this season, if they turn the football over, chances are they are not going to have a good football game. They buttoned that up last week and got the win. They're hoping to do the same here today. They looked very good on that drive, and they protected the football. Justin Tichy kicking off, and again it's going to be a touchback. Through the back of the end zone, first down at 10 from the 20 for Carolina. Number five, Barrington Edwards on the carry. Then by number 54, Pat St. Louis. Barrington Edwards on that last run for Carolina. And we are uh, ticking down here in the final seconds of the first quarter. Sexton turns around, hands off, first down and more for Barrington Edwards, who transferred from LSU a couple of years ago and is the primary backup to McGill, but he will get about 10, 12 carries every game, and when he does, he's effective. Well, this is something Wally Burnham, defensive coordinator for USF, is really concerned about. Rutgers ran the football down their throat. It resulted in one of their two losses, the other being Kansas. The D-line needs to get off of the football and get some push. They're getting manhandled by the big guys of North Carolina. Turns and hands off again. And again, Barrington Edwards, a good pickup this time on first down. He's able to get five before Stephen Nicholas is able to bottle him up. And that's the end of the first quarter. Good first quarter. Carolina seven, South Florida seven. We're back after this on ESPNU. ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. Ready to start the second quarter. We're all tied up at seven. The Bulls and the Tar Heels here at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. Brian, a couple of freshman quarterbacks have done a pretty good job running their respective offenses so far. They really have. Cam is making those good decisions that Coach Bunting needs him to make. 
Sexton hands off here to Barrington Edwards again. Gets out close to a first down. Penalty flags fly. Let's see what this is all about. A little extracurricular activity on the field there. Not sure what side they called for it. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 65 on the offense, 15 yard penalty for the end of the play. It will be third down. Well, that's going to be on Brian Chacos, the left tackle, a senior out of Darien, Connecticut. Granted a sixth year of eligibility by the NCAA, has seen every game of the John Bunting area at North Carolina, but called for the play, uh, foul there. Cam Sexton. Completing only 43 of his passes for 621 yards and three touchdowns coming into play today, but has been pretty accurate through the air so far this afternoon. Well, the running game, the balance of a solid running game is helping him get less, more difficult throws than normal. If he puts himself in the hole, has to be, has to be able to make longer, more high-risk throws. But when the running game is is operating well, like it has been, the, sh the throws are shorter and more concise. Ball start, number one on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. So another one against North Carolina. That marches it back inside the 25-yard line, third down and 21. So after a pretty penalty free first quarter we get a couple of early ones here a long situation now third down and 20 call it 21 for North Carolina Sexton from under center quick throw intercepted intended for Brooks Foster but it's picked off by Steven Nicholas the strong side linebacker a senior out of Jacksonville Florida And South Florida will have great field position now. Steven, Steven Nicholas, their Sam linebacker, he's a very aware player. He's very disciplined. You can always see him plotting and thinking. And when the ball's tipped, he's the guy who's going to be there, always in position. Very rarely do you find him not where he's supposed to be. Defensive coordinator Wally Burnham told us this week he's one of the best players he's ever coached. And he said he is going to play on Sundays someday. Quite a compliment. So Grothy takes back over. And he's going to run. Gets it to the 30 and then driven out of bounds there. So Matt Grothy, a good pickup there on first down. It's a six-yard gain before Walker runs him out. So South Florida hoping to take advantage of the North Carolina turnover and a couple of penalties back North Carolina up and that was just a bad series of events there for the Tar Heels and it led to the pick. Well it's just not being smart. That was a silly personal foul call. You just can't let your emotions rule you especially on the football field when the Zebras are watching. Brophy again going to keep it. Be a pickup of three yards, but short of the first down. I tell you what, that's a lot, a lot of hits for a quarterback to take. You like to see his aggressiveness, the way he runs the football, but he got beat up on that run. You don't need to be doing that. The guy is much too valuable as a passer. Well, the Bulls got a scare last week against UConn when Grothy sprained the top of his right foot, and he said at first, I thought it was broken. But as it turned out, it was just a sprain, and he only missed three plays before coming back into that game, and he ended up running for three touchdowns. But here takes another blast. We'll see if he can get up from it. Well, he took it right into the ribs. Probably has lost his wind. Hopefully that's it, but that's in the area of the flak jacket that protects his ribs. And, boy, if those things get messed up, trust me, broken or not, it takes a long time to get back to normal. Well, North Carolina's also got a player down. It's number 28, D.J. Walker. So hopefully both players are going to be okay. Grothy appears to be all right, shaking off the uh, cobwebs, and he's walking off. Meanwhile, D.J. Walker continues to be down on his back. That's a good collision there at the 27-yard line. 
Well, it looks like Pat Julmis will come in to run this offense for South Florida. He was sidelined with a thigh bruise in the second quarter of the season opener and has been out of the starting lineup since. It's been Grothy's team to run. So Julmis comes on, the senior out of Miramar, Florida, 6'3", 220 pounds. Well, he, he's been in a difficult situation as a senior, a guy who's been a starter for a long time, having to endure being put on the bench. That's very, very difficult, but he has responded well. His offensive coordinator, Rod Smith, had many good things to say about him. He's on the sideline. He's there to be able to help out Matt when he needs it, and he's been very, very good about the entire situation, patient, and now he'll get a chance to run the offense himself. So third down and two, Jewel Miss is running this offense now. And he's going to keep it. And he's got enough for a first down and more inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Larry Edwards, the Sam linebacker, steps up and makes the tackle. But Julmis able to get the first down on his first touch of the football game, an eight-yard pickup. Well, it was a good call, conservative call, keeping the ball on the ground. It'll be interesting to see how much they ask him to throw the football. Probably won't do it unless they absolutely need to and run that option under center like he's, he is right now. He's got Ricky Ponton behind him. So a couple of guys that haven't been playing a whole lot lately, and now penalty flags come in. And this is going to go against the Bulls. Looks like Fed Watson, the guilty car culprit, the left tackle. Well, Julmis is a guy who can throw the football, and he's thrown it well in the past. He's over 3,500 career passing yards. As you can see, he can run it as well. First down and 15 for the Bulls. At the Carolina 23. Turns and hands off. It's Ponton again. Puts his head down, trying to scoot through the middle, but it's closed up real quickly. Darrell Mapp, a former walk-on who became the starter in the middle last year, now starting on the weak side, makes the stop. Well, I think the interesting thing about the spread offense of Florida is you will see them get into a conventional look. Two tight ends, get under center. You don't see that sometimes, even down in Florida with Urban Meyer's offense. They, can, they pretty much stay in the shotgun look. I like an offense that varies its formation and varies the position of its quarterback. Growth he is back in there. He's going to throw to the end zone. Has a receiver and is caught. Touchdown. S.J. Green, the senior out of Brandon, Florida, with the touchdown, a 21-yard reception as Grothy comes back onto the field and throws a beautiful pass to the end zone. Well, this is a great job on the corner route by Green. Presses him inside to the post. And then Grothy throws a great ball right over the top of his outside shoulder, undefendable. So the Bulls take their first lead of the football game. Benz are on for the extra point, and it's 14-7 South Florida. S.J. Green, 6'3", 220 pounds, beautiful catch in the corner of the end zone. South Florida has taken the lead 14-7, 12 minutes and change to go here in the first half. And those receivers getting involved in this offense for the Bulls. Estre Green with the touchdown from Grothy. Well, Green is their most experienced wide receiver. He's got 28 starts under his belt. He runs really solid routes with good speed, and that is a deadly combination. And we'll look at it later on that touchdown play. Tichi kicking off, Brandon Tate to return. Kicks out to the 25-yard line. Let's go back to that touchdown. Well, as we look at it from behind the offense, we see Grothy rolling out. We'll see Green come into the picture. He presses the corner. 
to the inside to the post. Kareem Taylor, number 27, takes the bait, gives him two, three yards to work with. Growth, he doesn't have to throw it perfectly. He just has to get it out there, exactly what he did. And the touchdown is scored. Great job, great route runner. A guy like that with his speed, man, he's a coach's dream. First touchdown of the year for Green. Torres Johnson also with the touchdown in this game out of that receiving core, but that came on a run on the reverse. Speaking of the run, North Carolina going back to the ground with Barrington Edwards. We haven't seen much of Ronnie McGill here lately. He's starting running back uh, on the sidelines right now. Barrington uh, has done the lion's share of the running here recently. That is a short pickup of one yard. Well, Barrington, number five, he is a very good all-around back coach. Bunting loves the way he looks. He's got the body. He's got everything. And if you watch him when he pass protects, he's a machine. He is a chipping machine helping out those D tackles on the end. Does it all really well. Sexton over the middle, and it's intercepted. Second interception of the day for the USF defense. This time it's Danny Verpale. He did not play last year because of a broken foot. Healthy this season, makes a big interception there, and South Florida again has great field position. An interception and a 29-yard return for Verpale. Well, this is some of the decisions we were talking about in the opener of making that he just does not see Verpale in the middle of the football field. He has to have better vision as a quarterback. He's locked onto the receiver and loses sight of the free safety who's just sitting there like picking cherries off a tree. So the linebacker, Nicholas, with an interception, and now the free safety, Danny Verpale, with an interception. USF back on offense. Hand off to Williams. Short gain on first down. Second down and seven coming up. We're in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Keenan Stadium. Glad to have you along today for ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate with former LSU tight end Brian Kinch and I'm Clay Maffick. South Florida on offense in white. North Carolina in powder blue. Matt Grothy, redshirt freshman from the shotgun, from the 30, 25 yard line rather, has a receiver, a bobbling catch by Amari Jackson. 180 yards and a touchdown coming into the play today. Picks up 14 on that catch. Well, here's the guy I was talking about earlier. He is a playmaker. And I'm telling you what, this is concentration. This is focus. Grothy makes a throw he probably shouldn't have made, but his receiver Jackson makes him look good, makes himself look good, focusing in on the football, getting yards out of the play. What a great big-time play. Jackson, a junior out of Sarasota, Florida, gives the Bulls first down and goal to go from the seven. Grothy turns, hands off. Ricky Punt picks his way inside the five-yard line, and USF is banging on the door again. Well, North Carolina, after having the football and going relatively quickly out in their first series, did come back and on their second possession put it in the end zone. But since then, South Florida has grabbed the momentum and hasn't let go. Well, they have been very cons inconsistent on defense. That's something Coach Bunning talked to us about all day yesterday. From the four, Brophy rolling out, throws to the back of the end zone. Nobody home. It's incomplete. And we're seeing a lot of that today. He said, especially in the linebacker group and his up front guys, they've been inconsistent. He said against Clemson, we got bloodied and they need to fit to the play. And I heard that statement. I was a little bit concerned about what that meant. I asked him about it before on the football field. He said, it's just knowing what you're supposed to do, being where you're supposed to be. That's all it is. Brophy's going to go back. In the gun, coming off a great passing game last week against UConn. 146 yards through the air on 12 of 15. And now they're going to call a timeout. So Grothy decides he's going to talk things over with Jim Levitt and company on the South Florida sideline. And that's got to be frustrating for Bunting, seeing linebacker play that's inconsistent. He was a linebacker. 
He played in the NFL for 11 years, too, in the USFL, was an all-ACC linebacker. He's a very, very intense guy. He probably could still line up today. He fits the mold of a, of a linebacker. And so it's got to be difficult for him to see that kind of play out of his linebacking group and his defense as a whole because he is a defensive coach. And he takes a lot of pride in that. And we're seeing what they were fearing today with this South Florida offense once it gets mo going and Grothy gets his feet moving and his arm throwing that ball throughout the air. They've got to figure out an answer and cannot have turnovers like they've had a couple of times last two possessions with the football. Well, the Bulls poised to score their third touchdown of the game. We'll show you how we've come to this point. North Carolina got on the scoreboard first on a 15-yard touchdown run by Ronnie McGill. But since then, it's been all South Florida. Well, South Florida, very imaginative offense. I love watching offenses that take chances and do things differently. This is obviously a different type of offense, and they make it work with quality receivers, a quarterback who is young and can make the throw like a guy who's been doing it for three or four years. He does not look like a redshirt freshman. No, not at all. Third down and goal. Brophy, quick throw, corner of the end zone again, looking for S.J. Green. Actually, that was Amari Jackson, but there's a penalty flag down. See if this is pass interference, perhaps. Well, Grothy was trying to throw the back shoulder fade route throw. It's a it's a really undefensible throw because the, the receiver is going for the fade in the corner. He doesn't have it. Quarterback throws it to his off shoulder. Pass interference, number 27 on the defense. Since the penalty occurred in the end zone, by rule, the ball will be placed at the two yards. First down. It's on Kareem Taylor. Well, a strong safety. Taylor was the one who got beat earlier, and so what does he do? On a good route, back shoulder throw, he has to hold on because Grothy throws it right where he needs to. Jackson needs to come back and get it and can't because he gets held. Actually, that was Jacoby Watkins. I think they misidentified the player. Number 16 is Watkins, and that's who it likely was on. They just got it wrong down on the field. Number three on the defense. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. Oh, now an illegal Golden substitution on the Tar Heels. And you can see John Bunting is just fuming as Quinton Person came off. He wasn't supposed to be out there. Well, you don't want to give him free yardage on silly mistakes. That could probably be a coaching thing, a player thing. Hard to tell. Obviously, that did not come from Bunting himself. He was not happy, can so now the Tar Heels really up against it. As it's at the one yard line. Still having a hard time getting the right personnel out there. Looks like Carolina is finally set defensively. Brophy turns, hands off for Ponton, dives for the end zone. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown, South Florida. A one yard touchdown run for Ricky Ponton. And this North Carolina football team right now is in disarray. Well, that's one thing Bunting said that Miami, I mean, South Florida's offense does so many different things with so many different groupings, formations, and motions. And we obviously see that they have different groupings defensively. They're trying to match up against them. Substitution becomes an issue. Severino to hold, Benzer the kick. And it's no good. He missed it. Now we'll see if that comes into play later in this football game. But right now it's 20 to 7. The Bulls in charge. Grothy. Jackson hooking up a little earlier. And the Bulls are in charge. Well, North Carolina is struggling now. 20 to 7 South Florida. Three unanswered touchdowns. 9-10 to go here in the first half. Take a look at that last scoring drive for the Bulls. North Carolina on its first two possessions, 92 yards and a touchdown. Since then, 38 yards and penalties and a couple of turnovers. And Cam Sexton is hoping that his day is going to get better. Brandon Tate to take this one. Out across the 20. 
to the 25-yard line before he's pushed down. It's an 18-yard return for Tatum. Let's take a look at the All-State standings review coming up in just a second. First down and 10 here for Sexton and company. Hand off. This time it's Ronnie McGill back in the football game for the Tar Heels. And uh, as promised, here's that standings review presented by Allstate. Ohio State on top, followed by Florida and USC. I guess the real question now is, as we know that the Buckeyes are so solid number ones. Who's number two? That's been the question all week. Well, and we'll get a good look at that as Florida plays Auburn. Another tough SEC battle to be able to maintain that number two position. Be in Columbus next week to see Ohio State. Again, it's McGill, and again, Pat St. Louis in on the stop for South Florida. It's a gain of about five yards on the play. Uh, did we mention Pat St. Louis earlier? Oh, yeah. W why did we do that? Because he's going to be all over the football field. And I think we're seeing North Carolina trying to get back to what they needed to do earlier in the football game, what they did earlier in the football game to be successful. As I talked about, you can't put pressure on this young quarterback to make throws that he's not capable of. The running game has to alleviate that burden and that pressure. McGill comes off after picking up the first down, so they go to his backup, Barrington Edwards. He's going to get a short gain on first down. George Selvey. The right defensive end bringing him down. And we just see St. Louis again, number 54, in the backfield. The guy is an aggressive player. I just, of all the guys that I watched yesterday, and there was a lot, he stands out. He is a guy who will, in my opinion, most definitely be playing on Sunday afternoons. South Florida so far doing what they were hoping they would do, stopping the run. With that said, Edwards scoots through the middle and gets close to a first down, but there's a penalty flag down on the play. And this is going to be a holding call against Carolina. So North Carolina continues to shoot itself in the foot. Holding, number four in the offense. 10-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat second down. Full back, Bobby Rome called with the uh, holding call. There is St. Louis. And on the last play, you can see what kind of a maniac this guy really is. Well, watch how much ground he covers. And where is he? On the tackle. It's unbelievable. The guy has an engine that will not quit. I, I, I'm, I'm awed by him because I've played this sport and when you're out there for a long period of time, those wheels, they go south quickly, but not for him. Third year, third year starter at the weak side and making his 30th consecutive start here today. Cam Sexton flushed out. He's going to run. Looking a little bit like Grothy on that play. Gets close to a first down before he is steered out. But Cam Sexton, you see he's got a second gear there that he occasionally can get into. What, what was letting the ball go there for? That, I don't know. That, that was a little bit suspect. I, I guess he knew he was out of bounds, but that didn't seem real smart. Seemed like he was kind of surrendering early. But, man, that ball stays in bounds. That, that seems kind of silly to me. I don't know what the logic behind that was. An 18-yard pickup for Sexton, and the ball is just short of the first down, so it's going to bring a third down in inches. They go back to McGill, and he's got enough for the first down. Gets out to the 47-yard line. Well, that's a difficult situation for South Florida. They just are not that big up front in their front four. And when you need about a half a yard, those Carolina guys are going to root hog their way and get what they want. Well, I've got an answer for you on that play by Sexton where he got rid of the ball before getting hit. He did suffer a slight concussion late ah. in that Miami game last week, and <laughs> he's okay this week to play, but he probably doesn't want to get knocked around too much here this afternoon. Rolling out to the right, looking deep downfield, and throws it out of bounds. Second time we've seen him get rid of the ball in a smart decision here today. 
Cam Sexton, one of the uh, more sought-after prep quarterbacks in 2004, decided to come here to Carolina. Edwards back in there, tries to change directions. It's going to be a loss on the play. George Selby, the right defensive end, is there again. Actually, no gain. Sexton broke his ankle in the spring of 2005 and then redshirted last season. So really, he's like a true freshman. Didn't take any reps last year. You see Frank Signetti, his offensive coordinator, in his first year here, also the quarterback's coach, does a nice job. He does. Enjoyed visiting with him. He is only a few weeks younger than me, but man, fun guy, very real guy. So he's 75 years old is what we say. Incomplete, <laughs> in and out of the hands of Brooks Foster. And that pass needs to be caught. Well, that pass needs to not be thrown. And Sexton's making some poor decisions that we see that Bunning talked about. He needs to be more consistent in his decision-making process. He holds that ball too long. He stares down the receiver. If, if the defender doesn't hit the dirt turf there, it's another easy pick. Sexton already intercepted twice today. David Woolridge to punt it away. Amari Jackson will let it drop. Takes a little bit of a Carolina roll to the 15 and inside the 15-yard line. That's where South Florida will have it when we come back. 5.15 to play here. Back after this. Turnovers, the story of the game thus far. South Florida leading 20 to 7 over North Carolina. It's been a tough day for Cam Sexton, the redshirt freshman for North Carolina. He's been picked off twice. Those interceptions have been turned into 13 points by the Bulls. Matt Grothy, meanwhile, has been effective. He's got it now, throws out to the right. Receiver has it caught out over the 20 and close to the 25 yard line. That is Ian Randolph, the senior out of Plant City, Florida. It's going to be a gain of about nine yards on the play. Well, coming into the game, we knew we were going to be looking at two red shirts running their respective offenses. Both a little bit green, but Sexton has really looked like a red shirt freshman. Meanwhile, Matt Grothy has been looking like an upperclassman today, Brian. He's really thrown the ball well, a lot of what I expected out of him. Hand off to Ricky Punt. He's got enough for a first down, barely, but it is enough. They'll move the chains. Jacoby Watkins in on the stop. Ricky Punt's on the run. Let's look at what the quarterbacks have been able to do here today. Grothy has moved the offense. He's been accurate with his throws. That one a touchdown earlier in the game to S.J. Green. And meanwhile, Cam Sexton, a couple of interceptions. Well, just twice on the slant route we saw right there. Just doesn't see the, the defender. And again here, the free safety is sitting in the middle of the field. It's not like he made a fantastic play on the football. It was in just ill-advised throws in both occasions. Ponton. Dives down to the 30-yard line. Cooter Arnold, free safety, steps up to make the stop. He's going to bring up second down and six. Well, the amazing thing about it, Sexton was picked over Joe Daly after two ball games. Daly had six interceptions and made a lot of very, very poor decisions in those games. And because of his decision-making process, was chosen to be the starter after that. But obviously not doing that today as effectively as he had earlier in the year under center. And Daly's a guy who had been a starter at Nebraska before transferring here to North Carolina. Actually uh, became the first Nebraska quarterback in their history to throw for 300 yards in a game. But John Bunting, who uh, you just saw on your screen there, very uh, happy with the way Daly was running the offense, especially decision-making, so he handed it over to the redshirt freshman, Cam Sexton. So far, he's had a tough day. Here's Grothy, out of the shotgun, keeps it himself. Lost the football. It's loose, and it looks like Carolina might have it. We talked about protecting the football, and 
how that has been an Achilles heel for South Florida this season. They had none last week, but they turn it back over to the Tar Heels here. Well, that's the difficult thing about quarterbacks carrying the football, and obviously Grothy, who does it a lot more than normal for a quarterback, is used to taking care of the football, but a lot of times they still want to hold it like they're going to throw it. But he does a great job of covering that football up, and that looks very, very close to him being down on that play. And every play in college football that's reviewable is reviewed upstairs, and I don't know if they're still looking at this or not, but Levitt has a challenge that he could possibly use in this situation. I don't know if he's getting any kind of feedback on that, but it did look pretty close. But yeah, turnovers are a big issue. They cost football teams regardless of when and where you're playing. We just saw what the two turnovers have done to North Carolina, giving short fields to South Florida. And now the shoe is on the other foot and Carolina will have the opportunity with the short field. Well, Malik Brown, force the turnover if it indeed is a turnover. I tell you what, it looks like that ball is out. Before the knee touches. Right before his knee hits, it's coming loose. And it was a good call. And, you know, that's something that, that's been talked about, especially lately, about. It is a turnover. They're going to say it's a fumble. Malik Brown, the left defensive end, forced the fumble, and Quinton Person, the corner, recovered. They were talking about it last night. Has instant replay made referees more complacent and less likely to make the right call? I believe that it has. I think it's made them a little less reluctant to call what they think they saw on the football field and rely a little too much on the guys upstairs. That's interesting. First down at 10, three minutes to go here in the first half. Sexton on play action, goes deep downfield, has a receiver, and it's juggled and dropped. Jesse Hawley, the intended receiver, Trey Williams, a very good cornerback for South Florida, down there to frustrate things. Well, what a great, great design play. Sexton with the play action, not great play action, but Holly does a great job with a stutter and go. He sells the hitch route and then takes off. Beautiful route. Got to give credit to South Florida, though. Played the football, broke it up. But man, what a well-designed play and executed. Just could not bring it in. See the numbers since the start. It was Gachette on the tackle there. McGill, no gain. Third and nine for the Tardios. Points off turnovers. South Florida already with 13 in North Carolina now with their first takeaway, hoping to put this one in the end zone and make the Bulls pay for it. Well, not what Signetti, the offensive coordinator, wants to be in. Out of a short field, a turnover, third and long. Another play action. Sexton, Cox fires, tipped and incomplete. Ben Moffitt, the middle linebacker for South Florida, the team's leading tackler, also does a pretty good job in pass protection. Gets back there and knocked that one down. Well, again, Sexton, Moffitt is just sitting there, and he's locked onto the receiver and just does not see him well underneath the throw. Just, he didn't have a whole lot of options. He took what he could get. If he lays a little more air into that football, clears Moffitt's hands, maybe we have a completion. Well, Connor Barth is a very good field goal kicker, three for three this year. This would be a 53-yarder, but now South Florida is going to ice him a bit. They call a timeout. They've got one left here in the half. Bar three for three, a long of 47 this year. And a 53-yarder, we'll see if that's within his range. Well, he, he had a really, really good freshman year when he came out and struggled last year in 05, was only 11 for 21, and has got back on track. Hadn't had a whole lot of opportunities, but has taken advantage of the three chances he's got and obviously he leads the ACC in field goals with can you imagine that yeah. play being 100 <laughs> percent leading well if he can make this one it'll cut the lead for the Bulls in half all right 
from 53 yards. Here's Connor Barth, the junior out of Wilmington, North Carolina. David Wooldridge, the punter, on the hole. They're going to fake it. Here comes Connor Barth to the near side. A lot of room to run. Inside the 20 and out at the 15. But there's a penalty flag in behind the play. Wow. That was awesome. That was awesome. It'll be interesting to see what this penalty flag is. South Florida says it's on North Carolina. Here's the word. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 91 on the offense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. It will be first down. So it's a first down for North Carolina, but 15 yards of it are negated. And you can see John Bunting is fuming. Well, I, I still, that is, that my hat, so that is a great call. We're all sitting up here, and I'm sitting here thinking, this is a field goal dead into the teeth of the wind from 53 yards. What are they thinking? But a play they've obviously worked on in practice, a little flip behind the back. Well, that South Florida timeout actually probably benefited North Carolina. They were given a chance to talk things over. And this is what they came up with. And Connor Barth, field goal kicker, looks like a pretty decent running back. Does he look like a decent running back? He looks like a field goal kicker carrying a football. <laughs> <laughs> they send Bobby Rome in motion. Now the turn and the handoff to Ronnie McGill. He's to the 25, still on his feet inside the 20-yard line. Good pickup on first down for Ronnie McGill. Carlton Williams able to make the tackle, but not before McGill gets the first down. Well, I think that play has given them a shot in the arm a little bit, give them a little bit of excitement. Of course, we're not seeing it out of Coach Bunning. I'm sure he's still a wee frustrated, but I think it has given them some confidence, and offensively, we're seeing the results of that now. A gain of 14 on that play. First down and 10 from the 16. And a whistle and a stoppage here. Another penalty flag down. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. This will back North Carolina up again. Well, this isn't good for North Carolina when you consider the kicker, Connor Barth, has North Carolina's longest run of the day. Well, he was running scared, and when you're running scared, that'll have a tendency to make you run faster and longer. <laughs> His eyes were like saucers. That's a rare moment for a kicker. First down at 15 at the 21. McGill gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Five-yard pickup for McGill. Richard Klebert, who's been battling a groin tear injury, back in the lineup today, makes the tackle. We've got a timeout, and North Carolina has called it. A minute and 11 seconds to go here in the first half. John Bunting doesn't have a lot of hair under that cap, but what he does have left, I'm sure he wants to keep. And... Uh, the way that North Carolina has played at times here in the first half, a coach will lose hair over that kind of stuff. Well, I think you just go back to the last couple of years, five and six last year. Before that, they were at even 500, did get to go to the Continental Tire Bowl, but maybe that's why his hair is missing. He had a Division One AAA job that he loved, said he would not coach Division One football, but only here. And now he's here. The funny thing for me, we were talking before on the football field, his goal or his job he wanted out of football was to be a broadcaster. Never thought he'd be a coach. And here he is coaching at his alma mater. And they need points here. This is a crucial time for them as a team and an offense in this ball game. They need to get points on the board. Three would be okay, but they need to get it into the end zone and get a touchdown out of the turnover. After the timeout, second down and 10 for Carolina. Receivers to either side. McGill in the backfield. Play action. Sexton, pressure, rolling to his right. Looking toward the end zone. Runs out at the 24-yard line. Well, the Carolina faithful here want a penalty as Sexton was pushed out. 
none coming. That's a loss of eight yards on that play. Well, I, that's just not being smart as a quarterback because when you're outside the pocket, all you've got to do is throw the ball right back to the line of scrimmage and all is well. Instead, he took about a nine-yard loss right there, which does not help them, even if they're looking to get a field goal out of this. He needs to think more clearly on his feet, and you can continue to give an excuse for being young, but at some point, you got to grow up, make good decisions. Now rolling to his left, being chased. Again runs out of bounds. And we'll see the field goal unit come out again, I'm assuming, for Carolina. Cam Sexton recruited by Florida State and South Carolina. Decided to come to Chapel Hill. It is going to be a field goal attempt again here for North Carolina as Barth will come out one more time. Last time keeping this drive alive with a run most likely will kick it. Yeah, I think they're going to have their outside contained to the open field covered in this one. It's a 29-yard attempt. And now South Florida wants another timeout. 55 seconds to go here until halftime. All right, Barth from 29 out. Snap, hold, kick, and it's good. And the Tar Heels have cut South Florida's lead in half. It's 20-10 now with 51 seconds to play here in the first half. And like you said, they needed to get something out of that drive. They did it. Albeit three, they got something. They did. After giving over, giving up the two turnovers, a lot of points. That's something you can live with because you can go back to your team and say, you know, this is what happened. We made some mistakes, but because of that, they have points on the board. It wasn't anything that we did. We just need to correct those mistakes, not give them those opportunities like we did earlier in the football game and just play smart football. And I asked Coach Bunning about his speeches before the game. Does he get in their face? Does he try to get them going? He said it just depends on the circumstance and situation. Well, I can imagine that he's going to be in their faces a little bit as they go into halftime to try to get these guys coming out of the second half and, and doing something effectively with the football and controlling it. Well, North Carolina has played a pretty tough schedule, probably better than their one in four record indicates the Tar Heels have faced three ranked Division 1A teams and Miami who they lost to last week 27 to 7 and their victory was over a ranked team as well albeit a Division 1 AA team in Furman yeah 21 and 6 bunting we mentioned that to him yesterday he obviously that's no excuse in his book it does not matter who you're losing ball games to. He needs to win ball games. This team just needs to win. And to do that, more consistency, smarter football. Torres Johnson and Jackie Chambers back to return this kick. Johnson drifting back into his end zone and not going to take any chances. Touchback. So South Florida has it first down and 10 from their 20, leading 20 to 10 here with 45 seconds to go in the first half. So both teams have been victimized by turning the football over. South Florida has picked off Cam Sexton a couple of times and turned it into 13 points. And North Carolina recovering a fumble and turning that into three points. And it's got to be frustrating for Signetti, the offensive coordinator for Carolina, because they, they've ran the ball well early in the football game and gotten behind a little bit and had to throw the ball. South Florida, I think, has done a good job offensively of doing exactly what they planned to do when they came in here. A very, very unique offense that finds ways to move the football and really has been less explosive and less productive than I thought they would be this afternoon. That might be the last play of the first half. Indeed it is. So South Florida, very opportunistic, taking advantage of some North Carolina mistakes in the first half, and they have a lead at the break, 20 to 10. North Carolina's got some things to work on. 
Our score at the half, 2010 South Florida. You're watching ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. South Florida on top 20 to 10 here over North Carolina as we get start, get ready to start the uh, third quarter. Matt Grothy engineered a pretty good first half. The redshirt freshman quarterback for South Florida. Meanwhile, Cam Sexton. Also a redshirt freshman, threw a couple of interceptions. That's really the story of where we're at right now. Well, if we go back to Bunting's comments about playing the, the position of quarterback, it comes down to decisions. And we can clearly see poorly poor decisions by Sexton resulting in turnovers. And on the other hand, you've got Grothy who is making good decisions. Yeah, he's taking the ball down and not making ill-advised throws. He had one earlier in the game and got away with it. But with the exception of, of letting the football go on the fumble, which a lot of times when the ball gets hit at the right way, it comes loose. And that's not really about making a decision. It's just about taking care of the football. South Florida will receive here to start the second half. Four and two overall coming into this game. One and one in the Big East. North Carolina hoping to avoid a three-game losing streak for the first time since 2003. So Matt Grothy, number eight there for South Florida, will be back under center here to start the second half. They're going to have the ball first. Connor Barth, who was a, a kicker in the first half and also a running back on one play, kicks off here. And Torres Johnson will return out across the 20. Good return, 25 and close to the 30-yard line before he's wrapped up. 24-yard bring back, Brian Bethay on the stop. Keenan Stadium, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. With Brian Kinch and I'm Clay Matvick. Grothy sends Benjamin Williams in motion, his running back. So he's got five receivers out there. Throws it over the middle, has a man, caught. And Amp Hill, a transfer out of Louisiana State, makes the catch. It's going to bring up second down and four. North Carolina defensively, under defensive coordinator Marvin Sanders, we talked about trying to get a little more consistent. Sanders has moved up top into the press box, hoping to get a bird's eye view of things to help in that cause. He started doing that last week. First down run for Ricky Punt. Larry Edwards, the tackle, but there is a penalty flag down. Well, talking about Sanders moving up into the booth, linebacker coach Tommy Thigpen has moved down onto the field, and we're talking about inconsistent linebacker play. Fine morning against North Carolina. That is the first of the game. That inconsistent linebacker play earlier in the year, so... They believe that having Tommy Thigpen, the linebacker coach, down there to be able to talk to his players as we look at Marvin Sanders second from the left in the powder blue shirt and cap. Feels like he sees better from upstairs. Sideline penalty on North Carolina. Grothy is going to go deep downfield on first down. And they've got another first down inside the 35-yard line. The catch made again by Green, who already has a touchdown in this football game. And it's a 21-yard pickup, and South Florida is marching here on their first series of the second half. Well, Grothy, if you give him time, it, it's just, it's not fair. He is so accurate with the football, places the ball where he wants to, when he wants to. North Carolina's got to figure out how to put some pressure on him in these passing situations and slow him down a little bit. We talked about the offensive line for South Florida. No continuity. They've had some injuries and some players playing out of position, but looking good so far today as they give it to Benjamin Williams. It's going to be a short game. Well, when I talked to Marvin Sanders, the defensive coordinator for North Carolina, asking him about pressure, he said because of Grothy's ability to run the football, it slows down your pass rush, and you're not able to do that, especially on early downs. Pickup of four, second down at six. Out of the shotgun again. 
three receivers to the right. He goes out to the right. Oh, had a man, but it was dropped by Torres Johnson, who also has a touchdown in this game. It came running the football, though, on a reverse in the first quarter. So to bring up third down and six. Well, we just talked about pressure, and I don't know that Grody's been hit all day. No, he really hasn't. No, he, he took one there. Number 90, Balmer. Big 288 pounds of him. Got a little shot on him. He got he got rattled at one time in the first half, but as far as just constant pressure, he hasn't been under. Out of the shotgun, Brophy over the middle. Amp Hill. Ball comes loose, but looks like he was down. Cooter Arnold there to make the stop after a gain of five. Well, when we're talking to Cooter, we're talking about Cooter Arnold to his head coach. He said he needs to stop thinking at some point and start reacting. And basically, that's what you do on defense. You cannot process what you see or what you have in front of you. You just have to react. And that comes from experience, game study, film watching, and knowing what to anticipate. Fourth down and one. Touchdown, USF. No, they're going to rule him down at the one. The throw by Amari, or the uh, catch by Amari Jackson. That was Amari Jackson who threw it. And they're down at the one yard line. Big play there for South Florida. Well, it's not the first time we've seen a wide receiver throw a football. And talking to wide receiver coach Lawrence Dawsey. That was Cedric said, Hill on the reception, by the way. Said to look out for the double pass. That was the reverse pass. Pretty close. But that is a big risk play on fourth and one. And a gutsy call by offensive coordinator Rod Smith. Jackson, a former high school quarterback. That's his second completion of the year. So I'm sure North Carolina knew they had to watch out for something like that. Here's another look. An excellent punt return guy, but Jackson can also throw the football as he hits Hill on this play. Well, it helps to have him rolling left, throwing left. Not perfect, but right where it needed to be. What a call on fourth and one. The conventional up the middle just does not work for this USF offense, which is not conventional in any way, shape, or form. Rod Smith is their offensive coordinator in his sixth year at South Florida, and he has installed this no huddle spread type offense, which has all kinds of different looks. And uh, we get a look at the USF coaching box. And when, when Smith first came on board, he said, yeah, we were coaching out of trailers. Program has evolved. They hand off, and Williams bangs it in for the touchdown. And South Florida comes out of the locker room after halftime and marches it down. Big drive, big plays, and South Florida has a commanding lead now. South Florida on the touchdown run. Well, not something the Tar Heels needed. They did a good job of cutting the deficit to 10, but their defense just is not sound enough to be able to shut down this USF offense series after series. Set Cam Sexton and Carolina offensively need to answer the bell. Spencer makes it 27-10, 11.43 to play here, South third quarter. 27. All Bulls. South Florida with a 17-point lead now, 27 to 10 here in Chapel Hill. 11:43 to go, third quarter. The Bulls with an interesting scoring drive. Eight plays, 71 yards. One-yard touchdown run by Williams, but the big play on fourth and one. It was a pass from Amari Jackson to Cedric Hill, the tight end. 21-yard play that put it at the one-yard line. We've seen some uh, interesting play calling on both sides here today, but South Florida has the lead. North Carolina is going to be staring at a long field. 
As they get the ball back, Brandon Tate had nowhere to run. Good coverage down there by Houston Hess, backup linebacker for South Florida. There's a look at Jim Levitt. And what a job he has done with this program. He, he, he is the godfather of this program. He was there from the start. And it's celebrating a decade in existence now. North Carolina in season 116. Quite a contrast. M. Sexton hands off, and Ronnie McGill nowhere to want run, and it's like this South Florida team smells blood now. Alan Cray gets into the backfield, a loss of three on the play. South Florida came into existence in 1995, officially, but their first game wasn't until 97 against Kentucky Wesleyan, a big blowout, 80 to three in that victory. And actually, Jim Levitt said that might have been the biggest win in our program's history. After all, we practiced for an entire year for it. A lot of prep time for that one. What a job he has done there in Tampa. From his end zone, Cam Sexton fires it out. It looks like a first down. No, they're going to wave him out of bounds. And it was Brooks Foster over there who hauled it in, but couldn't stay in bounds. <laughs> I think the interesting thing going back to South Florida is they didn't have anything. They didn't have schedules. They didn't have coaches, goalposts. They didn't even have a washer and dryer. I mean, that's phenomenal. I think the interesting comment, Wally Burnham, the defensive coordinator, said he believes that they can win a national championship at Florida simply because of the fact that they're located in Florida and there's a wealth of talent in that state. Third down at 13, deep ball and could have been intercepted too. Sexton has already thrown a couple of picks. Mike Jenkins was closer to that than the receiver. The intended receiver was Jesse Holland. South Florida, when Levitt started this program, had a recruiting budget of $40,000. And right now it's four times that amount. Just give you an idea of where they started and where they've come to. And Levitt says, you know what? I don't have any intentions of ever leaving. Tampa's my home. This is a program I've built from the ground up, and I'm going to stay there for a while. Well, I, the maybe until I retire. Yeah, the comment I said that he says he sees himself coaching there until he retires, and he's going to buy season tickets and sit in the stands and watch him play on Saturday nights. That man <laughs> loves Bulls football. Amari Jackson touched it. Now he's got to return it. Big mistake, and North Carolina recovers. Amari Jackson couldn't decide what he was going to do. I, I don't know if he thought he was in the backyard playing Sandlot football or what. He did not seem to have any urgency about what he was doing with the football. After he touched it even, he's still, he's still just kind of looking up like, hey, what do you want me to do with it? Larry Edwards recovered it for North Carolina. He touches it there, and then look, he's like, okay, uh, well, uh, oh, okay. Maybe I should try to recover it. Well, but he catches it there, he touches it there, then he touches it again. Just a lack of urgency about what he's doing. Wow. Ian Randolph is the star punt return guy. For some reason, they've been experimenting here with Amari Jackson today. Randolph, the top punt return man in the Big East, as a matter of fact, but we haven't really seen him today. It's been Jackson, and that may uh, knock him off that special team for the rest of the year. You can't do that. Here's McGill on the handoff straight ahead. He's going to get about three or four yards on this pickup. Well, this is a nice break for Carolina. They need to take advantage of this and get some points offensively. We saw in that last series three and out near their own end zone. Not very productive. Tried to run the football and asked Cam Sexton to get the ball down the football field, which he didn't do very well. They do not need to get stuck into a hole. They need to stay ahead of the chains, be persistent here, not try to do too much, and just try to get some points. Second down and six. Go back to McGill. Tries to work it around the corner on the left side. Nowhere to go. It's going to be a loss of two yards. Jeremy Burnett, the strong safety, stepping up to bottle him up. Well, watching McGill, he just didn't real, seem real committed to the hole at all. Looks like as soon as he got the football, he shut it down, trying to pick his way. He can't do that. He is not a perimeter runner. He needs to stay inside, get what they'll give him, 
and instead now they're in third and seven. Well, it's a passing situation but Sexton 0 for his last seven throwing the football and down he goes at the 35. He did not see that coming. He was hit from behind by Selvi, the right defensive end, second on the team in sacks, and you can see why. Well, their their corners, Ryan Gilliam and Trey Williams, are doing a fantastic job on their wide guys. He had nothing. The tight end underneath, John Hamlet, covered like a blanket. He had nowhere to go with the football. He did the only thing he could do, which is just eat it. Well, Barth is on to attempt a 52-yard field goal. You'll remember earlier in this football game, they faked a 53-yarder, and Barth picked up the first down. This time he's going to kick it. It's up. It's on its way. It has the distance. It's good. Right between the eyes from 52. That is a career long for Connor Barth. And we'll see if that can... Uh, Give Carolina the infusion they need. They're down 27-13. 8-18 to play third quarter. North Carolina within a couple of touchdowns now after a long field goal by junior kicker Connor Barth. These have basically been the uh, MVP of the offense today for North Carolina. That's not a good thing. No, that's not a good thing. Let's take a look at the scoring drive for North Carolina. A 52-yard kick in the last time Barth had a 50-plus yard field goal was against North Carolina State in 2004. It was a 50-yarder. Well, he had a great year in 04. He kicked a game winner against Miami to upset them. Barth attempts the onside kick. It didn't go 10 yards. North Carolina recovered, but it has to go 10 yards, and it didn't. Boy, they're pulling out all the stops with Connor Barth today. It needed to get to the 45. It got to the 44 and laid dead. Illegal touching by the kicking team before the kick went 10 yards. The ball will be South Florida's ball. First down. So North Carolina takes a shot. It backfires, and South Florida has great field position here to start this series. Well, I think Barth might have forfeited his MVP trophy. <laughs> Just a hair short. That's a very, you know very... That almost worked. Oh, it's a very, very tough kick, and they practice it often. It's just hard to get that thing rolling the right way. But I like the call. Got to do something to shake things up. That was almost a ticket. Matt Grothy at midfield, hands off. This is Benjamin Williams, plucking ahead, short gain before Cooter Arnold wraps him up. Clock running, seven and a half minutes to go. South Florida on top by two touchdowns. They've got good field position again, second down at seven. Penalty flag in the secondary. This is going to be a delay of game. Twenty-five second clock expiring. There was a timeout by South Florida. So it appears West Virginia is going to stay undefeated, provided a, a collapse in that game against Syracuse. Meanwhile, Rutgers playing today as well, also undefeated. And don't forget about Louisville, who we're going to see coming up later today here on ESPNU as they're taking on in-state rival Cincinnati. South Florida, 1-1 one one in the conference, and their remaining schedule looks like this. Got uh, Cincinnati coming up on October 23rd. Then Pittsburgh, Syracuse. They'll see Louisville and West Virginia in back-to-back -back weeks. Couple of teams right now in the top ten, and both undefeated. Well, I think, I think Pittsburgh. We saw them the other night laying a shellacking down, and they 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 could be legit. 
maybe making a resurgence and then to, to end with Louisville and West Virginia that's a tough schedule for these Bulls well talking to Jim Levitt in 10 short years they've gone from a program that didn't even exist to being in the Big East and because they're in that conference and because they're in Tampa and in the state of Florida where there's such a wealth of talent they feel they can compete for a national championship batted down at the line this is going to be incomplete well, I thought that was one of the amazing statements from them. I mean, obviously, compete for one, winning one would be a, a totally different story. I think they have to do a good job of building the reputation of the school. Even coming into here, he, he talked about North Carolina not really having a lot of respect for them because they've only been around for 10 years. Right. They don't have any tradition. They don't have any history. And so it's, it's almost like they have not really earned it. And that's what they have to do is earn respect. There's no doubt they're going to be sneaking under the radar for a while until they build a tradition there in Tampa, but they're on the right track. Completion, I think it's going to be short of a first down. Jackson with the catch. To get inside the 35-yard line, but we may have to have a measurement here. Well, I think the building block of that, especially when you look at South Florida offensively, is a kid like Matt Grothy. He has three more years to play in this system, and he is something special. Now, I have I had a very, very high opinion of him. I talked to Jim Levitt down on the field about him, and he said, well, you know, I have to be a little more reserved because I'm his coach, and I understand that, but I think he's really going to be something special. They gave him the first down, first down and 10 for Grothy and company at the 34-yard line. Two receivers to the right, comes down the line near side. Tries to change direction. That's going to be a short gain, a yard on the pickup for Matt Grothy. Yeah, he's a redshirt freshman out of Lakeland, Florida. And that is a good school. That is a good town to be in. And, and there is so much talent in the state of Florida. If you can get guys like Grothy and, and some of the other talent out of that state, you are going to be competitive. Well, he was the Class 4A player of the year and a finalist for Mr. Football in Florida. And I really, seeing him play, can't understand how he didn't have that title, how he didn't win that award. Inside handoff. Ricky Punt in a big run. And North Carolina is going to have to figure out a way to slow this USF offense down. A 19-yard run. Malik Brown finally brought him down. Well, Grothy, just a quality quarterback, even last week against UConn, was 12 of 15, had three rushing touchdowns, along with one that he threw through the air. And look at his stats this, this day, just very, very accurate, makes very few mistakes. We talked about it in the open. Play action, throws underneath, has a receiver, and it's Devon Gordon. Just his fourth catch of the year, Arnold wraps him up. It's going to be short of a first down, but they're inside the 10 at the 9. And it'll bring up second down and 4. But he has done everything that we expected him to do. Running the football, throwing the football. And I think what we haven't talked about is his leadership ability and how people will rally around him and this team will rally around him. And he's a self-proclaimed mama's boy who wants to be a high school math teacher someday. Gives to Williams. He crashes inside the five. That's enough for a first down. It's going to be goal to go for USF here. Williams quietly having a pretty nice day. He gets seven on that carry. So we take a look at total yards by half. In the second half, it's been all South Florida. It's a 110 yard difference. Ponton, touchdown. Ricky Ponton in his first game of the season finds the end zone. He had 373 yards rushing last season and a couple of touchdowns. They were hoping for big things this year, but of course, missed six games serving that suspension. But he's back, and he has uh, put South Florida on top 33-13 pending the PAT. Well, he, he was the backup last year to Andre Hall, who is their all-time leading rusher at South Florida and got playing time last year. That shows you how much these coaches like this young man. 
and they have missed him early in this season, and he is a welcome addition back from that suspension. Delbert Alvarado kicks the extra point. For some reason, Mike Benzer is not kicking PATs right now. Regardless, it's 34-13. South Florida gets in the end zone again. Well, after North Carolina pulled to within 14 points, South Florida goes down and scores again. It's now 34-13, 4.40 to play here, third quarter. At last drive, saw Ricky Ponton running it in from two yards out after an eight-play, 44-yard run down the field for the Bulls. 3.38, time of the drop. From inside the 10, the return coming back out over the 20. And to the 24-yard line, that return by Brandon Tate. Sam Miller in on the tackle. We're in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Keenan Stadium. On a beautiful day, powder blue skies to match a lot of the powder blue shirts and jerseys we see in the crowd. Brian Kinchin, Clay Matvick on hand. South Florida in white. Tar Heels in powder blue and hoping to avoid a three-game losing streak for the first time in a few years. But right now, their backs are up against it. 34-13 Bulls. Cam Sexton, who has had a difficult day, is back under center. Play action, rolling to his right and out of the pocket. Cox's arm fires downfield. That was almost picked off. Almost the third interception of a Sexton pass here today. And Ryan Gilliam, the backup right corner, had his hands on it. That was intended for Jesse Holland. Well, they do a good job of, of running the boot play. The problem is, is South Florida is all over it. They had only three receivers out, and they're all covered up. And Sexton is holding it as long as he can, trying to let them get open, but nothing's there. And then he's forcing it in on ill-advised throws. Sexton now one for his last 11 throwing the football, and he's been picked off twice. They go back to the ground. That's a, a safe play about right now, and it's Ronnie McGill. Check that Barrington Edwards, McGill's backup. They're slow getting up. It just Short looks like game. North Carolina is just playing very uninspired football. It's like they knew the reality of this game, but they pretended not to for the first half. But now it's like it's setting in, well, this is what was going to happen anyway, and nobody seems to be really taking charge out there. They're just kind of there. Yeah, they need something to light a fire. Third down and seven. Over the middle, Brooks fostered the catch, and that's enough for a first down. And in the defense of North Carolina, Brian, it's not like they didn't try. They certainly tried with that onside kick that just failed. It was by inches that they did not recover that and keep possession of the football after the long field goal. Well, and we talk about youth of South Florida and Coach Bunning was telling us yesterday 24 of their 27 recruits this year are redshirting. It's a wealth of talent waiting in the wings. Play action again. Looking downfield, forced out. Down he goes. It's a loss on the play. Steven Nicholas, who has an interception already in this game, gets the sack on Sexton. And the miscues piled up early in this uh, ball game for North Carolina. A couple of interceptions and the aforementioned onside kick that came up inches short. Well, these two miscues both led to South Florida touchdowns. And then Connor Barth, our MVP at the time, trying to get him the football back. And just about a half a yard, too little umph on that football. And that gave South Florida a short field, and they took it in for a touchdown. This is going to be pass interference in the secondary. Jesse Hawley making the catch in spite of the interference from Ryan Gilliam. Yeah. Pass interference, number 22 on the defense. Ball be placed at the spot of foul. First down. A gain of 12 on the play. Well, here's what we need to see out of Sexton. Gets protection, steps up, makes the good throw. A nice throw, route run by Holly, who comes back to the football and digs it out, even with Gilliam hanging on his back. 
First and ten at the 44. Sexton surveys the field. Now he's going to run across midfield to the 45. Still on his feet. 40 has room to run. Inside the 25-yard line to the 22. Big play for UNC. See what North Carolina can do after the big play. They go to Edwards and little or no gain on that play. That run by Sexton, 33 yards. Josh Julmis on the tackle. Coming up next week, of course, you and I are going to be in Columbus for Indiana and Ohio State, the number one Buckeyes, provided that they can get past Michigan State this week. They can try and avoid an upset there. Yeah, they don't have a whole lot of talent on that team, huh? They, they're in trouble, don't you think, Clay? They're pretenders, right? Pass complete inside the 10 yard line to Kenton Thornton. Another redshirt freshman. He's out of Dallas, so redshirt freshman to redshirt freshman. And it's going to be a first down and goal to go for North Carolina. Well, we asked for a spark, and we've got it, Cam Sexton, with the big run, getting the football down the field now, making some good decisions and good throws with the football. They need seven points to get this thing back to a 14 point ball game and really put them back in it if the defense for Carolina can respond. First career reception for Thornton. It's like he's paid the price for it. Yeah. On the hit delivered. Yeah, it's Lewis Gachette. One of three converted quarterbacks in this South Florida secondary. Gonna come off and it looks like it'll be all right. So first down and goal to go. And if North Carolina ever needed a touchdown in this game, they need it now. There are a couple of times they had to settle for field goal attempts. They need to get one in here. Well, Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator, four years prior to this at Fresno State, had a lot of originality, a lot of unique play calling. We need to see that now. Sexton gives to Edwards and runs into a wall. No gain on the play. Ben Moffitt, the first one there. Defensive coordinator Wally Burnham for South Florida calls Moffitt a, a throwback. Guy who's uh, got an aversion to the city. Started uh, going to school at, in Tampa, of course, his freshman year and said, you know, I don't like this. I'm going to live in my hometown of Bushnell, which is about 45 miles away, and drive to school every day. That's a lot of miles on the vehicle there. Sexton out of the shotgun. Looks to the end zone, throws, touchdown, Carolina! John Hamlet, second year starter at tight end, with the seven yard touchdown reception. He had just three catches coming into the game today. His fourth of the year is a touchdown, and North Carolina is not out of this yet. Needs to watch out in his celebration. You might get injured. <laughs> well, this is a great throw by Sexton. Throws the, the, the BB right in over the top of the corner route, right over Patrick St. Louis, who's had him in man coverage. Hadn't seen a whole lot out of the tight ends today on either side of the football. They're not really involved in the offense, but Hamlet does a great job of bringing down the six points that they really needed to get out of that drive. And now we got a 14 point ball game. Here we see Sexton from the end zone, just throwing it right in there where it needed to be. This guy, Hamlet is a good athlete, very decent blocker, well-rounded tight end, big guy, 260. They just keep getting bigger. I used to, I was 230 when I played that position. You can believe that? <laughs> He's a big guy. Senior out of Lynchburg, Virginia. And as much as that might do for Hamlet's confidence, I don't believe that that's going to help Cam Sexton out. Boy, he needed something to go his way. Well, and not just him, but I think the confidence of that Carolina offense in general and the Carolina team in general. We were just talking about them just being out on the football field and not looking like they were very inspired. 
And we see Sexton here with his stats in the second half. Not overly impressive, but I think the rushing yards, 57 yards, that's fairly impressive. And we're talking about Grothy the whole time and how well he can run the football. But Sexton showing us, you know what? Two can play at that game. So Sexton completing his last three passes. The final one, a touchdown strike from seven yards out to Hamlet. And the last time Connor Barth teed one up for a kickoff, it went nine yards. Let's see what they do this time. Certainly South Florida will be ready for it. Inside the five, here comes the return. Taurus Johnson. He's got some ability, gets it out over the 30-yard line. Out to the 32 before Kendrick Williams wraps him up. 23 seconds to go here in the third quarter. 34-20 South Florida. They have had the lead since the very early stages of this game. The second series for Carolina resulted in a touchdown. But since then, it's basically been South Florida's game. Well, it really has. And this offense of South Florida has just done a very good job of doing what they do well. Very original offense, not your run-of-the-mill normal offense. We look at the stats, the scoring drive for the season, 25.2 points per game today, 34. Well, it's a lot of points. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. North Carolina will try to come from behind in quarter number four. Bulls on top by a couple of touchdowns. The ACC against the Big East today here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The first meeting of these two schools in football. South Florida trying to go to 5-2, and two, which would match their best start in team history through seven games. And North Carolina trying to avoid a three-game slide. And so far, Matt Grothy and the South Florida Bulls have been in charge. 34-20 our score as we start the fourth quarter. Jim Levitt, head coach of the Bulls, celebrating their 10th year of existence this season. Trying to get their first win in ACC against an ACC opponent. Throws it out to the left side. Pass complete to Ian Randolph. Larry Edwards has been in on a lot of tackles today. Makes the stop and pickup of seven, second down at three. Well, they get that trips look to the far boundary, and you know it's coming. You know they're trying to get the football to their playmaker, Ian Randolph. And they do it, and you just can't stop it, and they get seven yards out of the play. Just very, very difficult offense to defense. I'd be surprised if Grothy picks up the three yards himself here. He likes to run, but no, he hands off to the running back. It's Ricky Ponton. Who's done a nice job in his first game back here today. Cooter Arnold in on the stop. And the thing about Ponton coming back, you wonder how that might change the attack for South Florida. But the coaches told us this week, Brian, that, you know, Grothy is going to continue to be a dual threat for them, even with their starter back. Well, I think that's just a given because their running game, regardless of how effective it is he adds to that no matter how effective it is it, he, he just does nothing but bolster that running attack for them on first down straight ahead pick up of two yards on the play play action being chased Grothy still has his eyes downfield. The football goes that way, but out of bounds. That's a smart play by a young quarterback. Could have been a big loss, but gets rid of him. Well, South Florida needs the clock to keep rolling. It is their friend. Late in the ball game, you're leading. The clock is your friend. You want it to keep rolling. But when you're in third and eight, it's hard to put the ball on the ground. Now, I mean, second and eight. Now they're in third and eight. But with Grothy, Grothy, they'll give him something short and underneath, and somebody in Carolina's defense needs to step up and be heard from. Maybe Victor Worsley, the middle linebacker. Somebody needs to make a play. We need to see pressure here. Big play for Carolina. If they're going to have any chance in this game, that's exactly what they needed. A loss of four on the sack of Grothy. 
Brian Rackley, the left defensive end, a senior out of Tallahassee, Florida, made the sack, and South Florida has a man down. Appears to be Walter Walker, the right tackle. Well, we hadn't seen North Carolina be very effective bringing pressure, and they haven't done it very often. They obviously picked their places. Marvin Sanders, the defensive coordinator, as we talked about, is very reluctant to do it on early downs, obviously on third and eight, when they know they need to have a stop. He brings five guys up the middle, drops them back into zone coverage, doesn't give Grothy a whole lot to choose from, and gets to the quarterback. Needed to stop him there now. Goes back to Cam Sexton and the Carolina offense to be able to, to go on a long field as they did earlier and get some points. This is still a ball game. They have some confidence. They need to get more than just a three and out here offensively. Brandon Tate, who averages about 21 yards per punt return, is back deep for Carolina. And the Tar Heels could have pretty good field position here to start this drive. Justin Tichy standing at the 27 to kick this one away. It's going to be another rugby style kick. The short man takes it. It's McGill. He's out over the 50 yard line. And like I said, North Carolina is going to have excellent field position, and they're not out of this yet, down a couple of touchdowns. It's a 13-yard carry on first down for Barrington Edwards. Little reverse. And driven out of bounds is Brandon Tate. That's going to be a loss of eight yards on the play. We're trying something a little different there, trying to catch South Florida napping, and it didn't work. Jeremy Burnett was able to wrangle Tate. Well, you got to give credit to South Florida for staying at home. I don't think it's a play you need to do at this time in the ball game, but I like the fact that he... He called it, took his shot, paid a price for it, but now they got to dig themselves out of a hole without trying to get too much out of the play. Low snap, Sexton able to handle it. Pump fake, now he's going to run and nowhere to go. Drop and dropped hard at the 45-yard line. Another loss, this time two yards, and North Carolina is going to be facing a third and long. Ben Moffitt was there, the middle linebacker. Well, I just continue to have to give credit to the secondary of South Florida. Trey Williams, their cornerback, and Mike Jenkins on the right side have just done a great job yeah, of they've, covering up their wide receivers. They've been doing a great job back there in coverage. Yeah, yeah. He, ha he has nowhere to go with the football, and you can't fault him for that. They're just doing a good job defensively of shutting him down. Sexton quick release this time, but Brooks Foster left it behind. And Tyler Roberts was back there and uh, good coverage that time as well. Tyler Roberts, the nickelback. So North Carolina will punt. Well, they did not need a three and out. They got in the hole after the reverse. A call maybe not something you do on first down save it for more of a second and short where you don't really risk getting behind the chain so much and putting your young quarterback in a situation that he can't get out of. Jackie Chambers standing at the 10 yard line to return this punt. It is a beautiful one. It's going to sail into the end zone. I think that's exactly what David Wooldridge had in mind, but it was a good punt. First and 10 at the 20 for USF and we come back 10 58 to go 34 20 Bulls. South Florida has the lead and the football under 11 minutes to go here in the football game. Keenan Stadium here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Tar Heels facing a three-game losing streak dead in the eyes. Grothy out of the shotgun, hands off. Williams 
Goes over left uh, tackle. Terrell Williams Matt on wraps him up after a five yard game. South Florida against the ACC has yet to get a victory. Could happen here today. Things looking pretty good for Matt Grothy and company. Bulls out of the Big East after a couple of years in Conference USA, but it's their third meeting against an ACC opponent. Grothy sacked for the first time here today. Victor Worsley, who squats 622 pounds, middle linebacker, got in there and sacked Grothy. It's a loss of three. Yeah, I think that would probably be a record, wouldn't you think? Well, for the linebackers, it is. I don't know. That, that could be an across-the-board record. That's that's some serious poundage right there. You were saying earlier that Grothy hadn't been pressured much today. Finally, North Carolina gets to him, but it's starting to get to be a little bit too late. It looks that way because South Florida bringing out as well on defense. It's going to be a first down for the Bulls. Torres Johnson picks it up. Ricky Punt on that last carry. Worsley who had the sack moments ago on the stop. Well, I know as a coach, when you see those two teams in your schedule, you can't make you feel real good. That's that's a tough order for any ball club. But that's the way it is in the Big Ten. Yeah. You know, every, every week. Well, there's so many good teams there. Week in and week out, you're facing somebody that's either got a salty record or a tradition-rich program. A talented quarterback. It's every week in that conference. So we expect a good uh, matchup next week, even though Indiana doesn't have a great record. You can see what they can do against ranked opponents. Well, anytime you're ranked, you're going to have a target on your back, whatever team that comes in, and they are going to play above their normal game. It's just tough to do it, I think, a couple of weeks in a row. South Florida with a third and five. Incomplete. Penalty flag comes in very late. A very late flag. Pass interference, number 16 on the defense. Jacoby Watkins, the offender, and Colby Erskine, a seldom used running back, was the intended receiver. It was well incomplete. Well, pass interference is the call. And, and you talk about a late flag. That was a late flag. That he, he was debating it in his own mind whether or not he was going to call it. Keeps this drive alive for the Bulls. First down and ten now at the 46. Motion is Jabari Jackson. Brophy's going to stay on his feet, gets across midfield. That was a huge penalty against North Carolina. That is going to allow them to run at least another two to three minutes off this clock if they don't get another first down. And that would have put them punting the football. With Brian Kinchin, I'm Clay Matvick, North Carolina, at home today against South Florida. First meeting of these two programs in football. And the Bulls have had the lead since early in the uh, first quarter. Second down at six. Give to Williams. Darrell Mapp makes the tackle. It's going to be short of a first down. Four yard pickup. Matt Grothy, the uh, redshirt freshman quarterback for South Florida has had a very decent day. 158 yards through the air to touchdown. His accuracy has been right on. Meanwhile, his counterpart Cam Sexton has thrown a couple of interceptions. And you can see his accuracy has not been on. 8 of 22 thrown. 
growth he keeps, he's got a first down. Boy, this guy just loves to battle. Take a look at what the quarterbacks have done today. We'll show you the touchdown pass. Growth to S.J. Green in the first half. And Cam Sexton started with a couple of picks. Well, just poor decisions, not seeing the field, not having good vision, and not even seeing defenders underneath. Yeah, he comes back and makes a good throw to his tight end to bring him within 14. Good run, Ricky Putt. And he's got a first down. But obviously it was a little too late. And you have to look at their defenses as well, with the exception of passing yards per game. North Carolina's defense does not rank higher than 85th in the country. So you could say Grothy had a less of a challenge ahead of him facing a defense that was very porous, to say the least, but have played good quality football teams without question. After the pickup of 13 yards, they go back to Ponton and another big run on first down. He is going to get seven or eight on that carry. Back to Ponton and another first down. And South Florida keeps that clock running. And they keep going to their top running back. The clock is their ally right now. Well, I think he has been a big bonus to have back in that backfield. This is his first game of the season, looking at 100 yards. All he needs is three more to get over that hump. South Florida is calling a timeout with 5-10. Check that North Carolina timeout back after this. Just a picture-perfect day on the North Carolina campus here in Chapel Hill. It hasn't been a good day, though, for the Tar Heels as they're down 34-20 with just 5-10 to go, and South Florida is moving the football again. They go to Ricky Ponton. Over the left tackle, it closes quickly. Short pickup on first down. Victor Worsley, the first one there, the middle linebacker. Three-yard gain. Well, South Florida has given North Carolina a lot of different looks today. They've done what... I think the Tar Heels kind of expected, but North Carolina really hasn't been able to stop. No, they really haven't. This defense just does not have an answer. They are struggling across the board of trying to figure out how to stop offenses, and it doesn't matter if it's South Florida or not. Now Williams changes directions. Cuts his way inside the 10-yard line. Williams It'll be short of a first down, but it'll bring up third and short. Brian Buffet, the tackle. Well, I think the exciting thing for Jim Levitt as we take a look at him is the youth of his football team. Seven of his 11 seniors this year came to South Florida and weren't on scholarship. 405 total yards of offense. South Florida approaching 200 for this half. And backing away is Grothy. He's going to call a timeout. Ricky Ponton, by the way, there you see him on your screen, 101 yards on the ground. Not bad for his first game back this season. Again, the Big East standings. Got three undefeated teams in there. South Florida with the win today goes to 2-1. That is a great football conference. It really is strong. And South Florida right in the mix of it all. And the youth of this team, I think the expectation is going to be great. 22 players saw their first action in the opener this year. And with, with their quarterback, Matt Grothy, I, who I believe you can build a, a team around, a program around for the next three years, that's exciting. And they are in a difficult conference, probably will be very difficult to contend for that championship. But, man, when you're doing things like that and you're only 10 years into this thing, you should good. be congratulated. I misspoke. Uh, South Florida will stay at 1-1. One one. This is a non-conference game. But they are trying to go to 5-2, and two, which would match their best seven-game start in school history. Here's Grothy. Fires toward the end zone. In and out of hands of the intended receiver. 
It was Amari Jackson. Good coverage by Quinton Person. We've talked a lot about today as well. He had it in his hands. Couldn't bring it in. Delbert Alvarado is going to kick this field goal. It's going to be a 26-yard attempt. Check it, 28 yards. Mike Benzer did the field goal at PA ticket, PAT kicking earlier, but Alvarado comes on. And it's good. It's 37-20 with 3.35 to go. A beautiful fall day in North Carolina, South Florida. Leading this one 37 to 20 in the closing stages of the football game. South Florida's last scoring drive 17 plays, 71 yards. Biggest thing took seven minutes and 23 seconds off the clock. You've got a lead, that's what you're trying to do. Well, Carolina was in this ball game if they could have gone, gotten South Florida to go in three and out. But yet they did the exact opposite, eight up clock and scored. We're going to bring this thing out. This is Brandon Tate. Gets it out over the 20 yard line to the 22. Penalty flag on that last play. Kenton Thornton, his second catch. Look at that recap from the basketball season. They were 12 and 4 in the ACC. That was good for a second. George Mason knocked him off in the tournament. Well, I think in that basketball program, I think alleviates a lot of the pressure on John Bunting and and. And their football program, I mean, they have not been over 500 here since his first year yeah, when they were point. eight and five in the Peach Bowl. And yet you never hear about his name, about being replaced or being on the hot seat or on the hot seat. And, and I think it's very similar to a place like Iowa or Kirk Ferentz is. They love for you to win football games, but they're not going to put you out to dry when you don't. I think that's a good thing, but at the same time, obviously, as a fan, you want to see productivity. You want to see victories in your football program. So it's out of bounds and incomplete. Sexton is down. And he's holding his ankle. Looks like he's going to tough it out. Yeah, you never hear about the football program at Duke. Yeah. You know, right. win or lose, well, there's not a lot of angst from the fan base there about that football program because they've got basketballs. That's kind right. Of, kind of a similar situation just down the road here at Chapel Hill. Right. And they feel like they've got the right guy. He's a guy who's passionate about North Carolina, loves this university, loves this football team. You mentioned it. He, he only wanted one college football job, and it was here. And it came open, he jumped it. Sexton running for his life, dropped the football. It looks like he is down. The ball did come loose, and somebody recovered it. Well, he, he's ruining their, their running statistics. Not that they were great. That's a loss of 17 on that play. Yeah, it just negative yards don't help your stats. Well, I think they have made the decision that Cam Sexton is their guy. And, and he has. I think he has a wonderful future. He's just kind of getting baptized by fire. Right. And sometimes that's just the way it works. You have no other choice. Joe Daly, the guy that he, he took over for, had some experience at quarterback. But he was an older guy. He was a junior. And they figured with a redshirt freshman, three years left to play, it's worth putting him in when the talent was fairly equal to give him some time to grow up. Sexton, deep downfield, trying to hit Jesse Hawley. That just failed to click along that far sideline. Trey Williams, good coverage. Hawley, raised by his grandmother, 
Interesting background. Team's leading receiver last year, named honorable mention all ACC. Well, I, I, the story begins sadly where his mom abandoned him and his brother. But the interesting thing I thought was that all the kids that he used to run with, who used to get in trouble with, started playing sports. So he, he had nobody to get in trouble with. He didn't so he like started that. Playing sports. So he started playing sports. Found out he was good at it. Jackie Chambers to return, and boy, is he hit hard. Ball pops loose. Who's got it? I'm going to say South Florida. But Jackie Chambers was punished down there by Kareem Taylor, the strong safety who also takes his turn on special teams, got down there in a hurry and blasted it. Well, going back to Jesse Holly. He loved basketball. Basketball was his sport. And he happened to pick up a football one day. And guess what? Very talented at football as well. He actually played on their national championship team last year, got in 10 ball games and scored 13 points. It's not a bad for multi sport. Yeah. We're talking about multifaceted. There's your guy right there, Jesse Holly. But he has decided to give it up and focus solely on football from here on out. So I guess you get to be in a national championship, you know, why not? Sure. He's got the ring. Pat Julmas is in a quarterback now for South Florida for the remainder of this football game. We're just over two minutes to go. Trying to run out the clock. They hand off. Benjamin Williams on that carry. Rel Mapp able to wrap him up. Loss of two. Well, Rod Smith, the offensive coordinator for South Florida, learned his offense from Rich Rodriguez, West Virginia coach. It's a zone read offense. They do a great job. Last year they had Andre Hall, a fantastic running back. They were focused more on running the football. Now, obviously, with a quarterback like Grothy, it can be more balanced and obviously throw the football a little more freely. Williams again, penalty flag down. That's on South Florida for an illegal shift. Matt Grothy, great job today running this offense for USF. And you mentioned Rod Smith, the, the offensive coordinator. Sixth year, he's got to be happy with what he's seen from that young man. Jim Levitt, I know, spoke highly of him this week, and we were excited to get a good look at him. He's impressive. Like I said earlier, did not look like a redshirt freshman. Looked like an upperclassman running the offense today. Very surprisingly mature for such a young guy, but obviously from what he did in high school, player of the year, a candidate for Mr. Football in Florida. He had skills. I just don't think they knew the well of talent that he had because you only get to see so much of a kid when he's in high school and so much of him on tape and to put him in an offense like this and to have him respond the way he has has been a pleasant surprise for these coaches meanwhile cam sexton struggled today through a couple of interceptions in the first half that usf was able to capitalize upon he scored touchdowns off both of those turnovers yeah, those were costly early in the game. It gave the momentum to South Florida. Just poor decisions by Cam and young guy who just needs to learn from mistakes and continue to grow and improve and make better decisions. And that's only going to come through time. There's Cam Sexton. And, you know, they've made a commitment to this kid. Redshirt freshman out of Lorenburg, North Carolina. Turned down Florida State. Bobby Bowden was after him. South Carolina was looking at him, but he decided to come here. His father went to Elon just down the road, said, I think Chapel Hill is going to be a good situation for you. And he has come here and has become the starting quarterback. But there is going to be some growing pains, especially when you're thrust into a situation where you're handed the reins and you're just 19 years old and, and really didn't get a true redshirt year because of injury. I agree with that. But I think because of Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator, I really like him. I like what he has done at Fresno State the last four years, the program that he built there offensively, and what he can do with a young guy like this who he really likes. He really believes in him. He's going to be something special. But he just he has to get that experience, get used to the system, and let the system 
work itself and not try to do too much with the football. And I think the main thing, as we saw today, just have better vision on the football field and be able to see the entire defense, not just your receiver and the man that's on him. South Florida punt with 43 seconds to go. Tate's going to play it on a hop. After the 25 and horse collared from behind. And a penalty flag comes in. Brendan Tate. Trey Williams the stop. Let's see if that was a, a an illegal tackle penalty. I don't know if the horse collar applies in college football the way that we see it in the NFL. No, it happened further back. It was a cheap shot. After the play was over, personal foul. Number 36 on the blue. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. Forget what I said. This is actually against North Carolina. It's on Kennedy Tinsley. Yeah, it was really, really late. Caught the tail end of it. Hit him right in the back. Just not something you like to see. Not good sportsmanship. But you never know what preceded that. There could have been foul play on both sides of the football. North Carolina is going to drop to one and five on the season. South Florida will go to five and two and match its best start through seven games in team history. Ronnie McGill. They were hoping to get him about 20 to 25 carries today. They were hoping that he was going to be effective. That's just his 16th touch of the day. So that kind of tells you how things went. Well, they had some soul searching to do on the North Carolina side. And for Jim Levitt and those South Florida Bulls, I think they got a lot to look forward to in years to come and this year as well. Now our final score, 37-20 South Florida. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Brian Kinchin and our entire crew, I'm Clay Matvick. So long from Chapel Hill.